Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today is going to be, I think, a medium size video of my birthday book haul because today, February 23rd, is my birthday. <laughs> really excited. Um, man, February has been crazy. I have had a lot of stuff happen in the month of my birthday. Um, I have had some highs, I've had some lows. I know it's only been 23 days into the month, but that's how crazy February has been for me. And throughout that month, or throughout this month, I've been buying books, probably a little bit too many. Uh, but that's okay, because now we have a video and everybody likes a haul. So without further ado, let's look at all of the freaking books I bought myself for my birthday. <laughs> so we're gonna knock the big boy out first. I got the complete box out of bleach. Uh, what volumes one through twenty one? Uh, they started having this for sale at Second and Charles. I walked past it. I was like, eh, should I do it? I was buying some other books at the time, and I asked the cashier. I was like, what do you think? Like, is it worth the money? And we both agreed. Yes. Let me just buy it because honestly I can't find these individuals um but I have the box set so I have volumes 1 through 21. I wish now that I could find a box set 1 and 2 of One Piece because at this point I can't get the omnibus for the next few volumes for One Piece and I cannot get them individually <laughs> so wish me luck on that journey. Uh, I'm really excited. I have not watched the whole season or every episode of Bleach. Uh, I think I watched season one a long time ago and I actually really liked it, but you know how I am. <laughs> I wanna read it too. So box it, here we go. And this cost a pretty penny, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna read it. So it's worth the money. Now I might do some quick synopses for you guys. Uh, what came out yesterday was Raw Hero 6. I've talked about this series several times. This is about a young guy who goes undercover, uh, working for the bad guys when he's really a good guy working for the good guy organization he starts to fall in love with one of the bad guy villains also he is going undercover as a woman it is a very funny series it's written by the same person who did pr prison school so it's very lewd it's very 18 plus so just know that going in I'm very excited to continue the series and yes see I read the bottom Virtual advisory, explicit content. It is very explicit, so beware. I got Soul Eater Volume 8. I am literally just picking this up as I go. I found this in Barnes & Noble. Um, if I can't get it on Amazon, or I at least find the volume in store, I'm going to buy it. I'm trying to complete the series, and I've noticed that they are coming out with the hardcover volumes now. They're up to Volume 6. And I was sitting there wondering, should I just start doing the the hardcovers? No, I'm sticking with the paperback. So slowly my collection grows with Soul Eater. Now this one is new. This is Kaiju number eight. I actually don't know what this is about. I think someone mentioned this on a TikTok and I saw it. <laughs> I gotta have it. I think the second volume of this is coming out in April. So I actually can't give you a synopsis of it because I have no fucking clue what it's about uh but that's okay honestly it seems like it's gonna be cool it's definitely like a monster type um series it looks like honestly it's kind of giving fire force a bit like when I'm looking at it through here obviously it's not gonna be that but <laughs> excited to read this one next up I got volumes one three and four I could not find two of Miriku chan so this is about a girl who one day can start seeing spirits and she chooses to ignore them, but that's very difficult because they are all up in her face constantly. Now, I didn't realize that this um, has a little bit of fan service, isn't it? fan service in it and this is <laughs> like a high school girl. So I didn't realize that at the time. I'm still gonna read it, um, but this is like horror fan service-y type manga. Now I just have to search for volume two, of course, before I ended up getting this. I remember seeing all one and two for the longest time in store. <laughs> now I can't get it. So that's my luck right there. Excited about this one. In my quest to just pick up what I find, I got School Live volume four. This is very similar in that it's like 
horror, gory kind of, um, but fan servicey high school people. But this one I actually don't know what it's about. Um, this was another one that like was on a TikTok of like horror manga you should probably read or like gory manga you should read, but I still don't know what it's about and that's okay. I haven't read volume one. I do have that one. Again, let's help me search for volumes two and three so I can get this completed. And I don't know how many volumes are in this series. I think the last time I went to Barnes and Noble, I saw another one, but it was like volume 12, maybe. I could be wrong. So if it's that long, I've got a lot of stuff to get in between, uh, but we shall see. Then I got so many volumes of, <laughs> so many volumes I can't hold them up. Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> so funny story. Look at the money, I'm just saying. Uh, funny story, I am slowly collecting this. I haven't started reading it yet, but I love the anime. And last week I bought some manga. I also went back this week, I bought some manga. Or maybe it was the week before, whatever. I get home and I realize, holy shit, I've already bought those. Like I bought those volumes the last time I was here. So the week before last, I bought 15, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> And then last week I bought the same volumes and I have no idea why I did that. Usually I take a picture of what I do and don't have. I did it this time. I think just because I was going to Barnes and Noble and Second and Charles so much and I got so lucky with so many volumes that I just didn't end up doing it. So I had to return them, but that's okay because I got volumes 21, 24, 26, and 27. I'm very excited. Um, this series is about Gon. He is a young kid. Uh, he's an adventurer and he is old enough now to try to get the hunt, go to the hunter's exam and try to be a hunter and get a hunter's license. Uh, this is kind of following in the footsteps of his dad who he hasn't seen for many years and along the way he meets several friends. So Kurapika, Leorio, and Kilawa. Kilawa is one of my favorite characters. I adore him. Um, it's just, you know, arcs up in there. Very, very fun. Um, this is not a completed series. The creator I think stopped at volume like 38 or something like that uh and I think the last four volumes four or five volumes pick up basically where the anime leaves off so I'm slowly collecting it I know that I'm going to get all of them I'm so close to getting I'm so close I'm only missing volume 16 22 23 25 and then whatever I don't have here so very exciting but I'm going to tell you what that right there, you know, the, the manga shelves I built that kind of had some space, they don't have any space anymore. So I'm gonna have to build more shelves. Yeah, it's a problem. Now this one, this one is volume pop of Blue Exorcist. Much like volume three, so hard to get, except now I'm starting to see volume three more in stores. I went to Second and Charles and I I did the once over, okay? And I got like a full set volume, which I will show you next. Um, and I don't know, like I could have swore I walked by Blue Exorcist and looked and I did not see this volume. For some reason, I was like, let me just go look at it again. And oh my God. So that's a big deal. Okay, this is a big deal for me. I don't know how many other people are collecting Blue Exorcist and it's a big deal for them, but it's a big deal for me because now I have volumes. I'm still missing some, so I think I need volume seven, eight. So I don't know, but <laughs> very excited. This is like a good find, you know, I'm happy about this. And then I just went ahead and bought Noragami volume 21. This is not going to be really hard for me to keep collecting and finding uh, the volumes. I feel like I am starting to see, it seems like it is like being bought when I go to stores, but I don't think I'm going to have an issue, you know, knock on wood. I really don't want to jinx myself. And then this should be the last of the manga that I got. From <laughs> um, I got so lucky. Okay. Uh, I sold some books to Second and Charles. Did I get a lot of money for them? No, but I got like 30 plus dollars. So that was exciting and I got really lucky and I managed to find every volume of Chainsaw Man and the newest one 
nine. Um, I don't know what Chainsaw Man is about. Um, and that's okay. It's okay. I remember when it first came out and I saw it and I was like, hmm, that seems interesting. Then I saw the trailer, I think, because it will be turned into a show. Um, I was like, okay, I definitely think I want to get it. And by the time I really was like ready to bounce, everything was out of stock. <laughs> it was so hard to get it. It was like Jujutsu Jitsu Kaisen. Um, but yes, I got the husband. That was pretty exciting. All in one go. So that was that was fun. Um, <laughs> definitely will be reading this. Definitely will be reading this. I'm, I tell you what. I know that my TBR grows more and more and it's it's hard but I'm gonna read them all what did I say I said I was gonna actually actually let me take that back I did say I was gonna read my books first I am only human let me buy things <laughs> I've had a hard I've had a hard month let me buy things and enjoy them all right, so enough with the manga. Let's get into like the novel, so on and so forth. So Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This came out in February. Uh, this was on like an anticipated list of like horror, sci-fi thriller. I'm gonna read a lot of the synopses for this for you guys because a lot of these are really interesting. They stood out to me, but like I could not tell you what they were about, so forgive me. Uh, so blurbed by Lori. Faria Solars. Dead Silence will keep you awake at night. This novel is full of old ghosts in every way possible and will haunt you long after the last page. Claire is days away from being unemployed, made obsolete when her beacon repair crew picks up a strange distress sing signal. With nothing to lose and no desire to return to Earth, Claire and her team decide to investigate. What they find is shocking, the Aurora, a famous luxury space liner that vanished on its maiden tour of the solar system more than 20 years ago. A salvage claim like this could set Claire and her crew up for life, but a quick search of the ship reveals something isn't right. Whispers in the dark, flickers of movement, messages scrawled in blood. Claire must fight to hold on to her sanity and find out what really happened on the Aurora before she and her crew meet the same ghostly fate. So, unspeakable horrors. I'm excited. It's a ghost ship. I now <laughs> I'm excited I I really hope that this is going to be scary I hope that this gives me that same feeling when I read the Carol haunt which was like is this goes real like I'm scared so I'm excited to read this one is anybody else did anybody put this on this anticipated read list I didn't do one at the beginning of the year but I saw like several books and this was one that I was definitely anticipating to come out next up is Devil House by John Darnell. He was author of The Wolf in the White Van and Universal Harvester. Never read either of those books, but again, this was something that ended up on like a TikTok of anticipated horror reads, I believe. So Gage Chandler is descended from kings. That's what his mother always told him when he was a child. Years later, he's a true crime writer with one grisly success and a movie adaptation to his name, along with a series of subsequent less notable efforts. But now he is being offered the chance of a big break to move into the house where a pair of briefly notorious murders occurred, apparently the work of a disaffected teen during the satanic panic in the 80s. Chandler finds himself in Milpitas, California, a small town whose name rings a bell. His closest childhood friend lived there once upon a time. He begins his research into the murders with diligence and enthusiasm, but soon the story leads him into a puzzle he never expected. Back into his own work and what it means, back to the very core of what he does and who he is. So Devil House is John's most ambitious work yet, a book that blurs the line between fact and fiction, that combines daring formal experimentation and a spellbinding tale of crime, writing, memory, and artistic obsession. Boom. It's beginning of the year, uh, scary books time, and I am excited about this one. On to another like anticipated horror book, and I love this cover. <laughs> it is A Manhunt by Gretchen Flecker Martin. Look at that look at that so this came out yesterday and I showed my husband <laughs> he did a double take he was like what the what is that so excited Beth and Fran spend their days traveling the ravaged New England coast hunting feral men and harvesting their organs in a gruesome effort to ensure they'll never face the same fate Robbie lives by his gun and one hard-learned motto other people aren't 
safe. After a brutal accident and twice the three of them, this found family of survivors must navigate murderous turfs, a sociopathic billionaire bunker brat, and an awkward relationship dynamics, all while outrunning packs of feral men and their own demons. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as I heard women hunting feral men, I was like, I got to have it. Uh, so I'm excited. Has anybody else heard about this book? This was, again, another one that was on an anticipated horror books read. Um, I am so excited to see it. Right here. The end of the world is nuts. How can you not like something like this? How can you not be enticed by something like this? I'm excited. I also got the next volume in the Noodle Shop Mystery, Egg Drop Dead by Vivian Chen. Um, I'm just slowly collecting this. Like I said, I really do like this series. So as I'm seeing them, I'm picking them up. Uh, this was supposed to be fancy intimate dinner by the pool. Instead, Alana's first ever catering event turns into full course madness when a domestic worker is found dead. Once again, so much death is following Lana. So much. There has to be some type of curse of some kind because death is following her. Is the party's host Donna, the sweet and sour owner of Asia, Asia Village Shopping Plaza, where Ho Lee is situated somehow to blame? That's what Lana, whose plate is already plenty full with running the restaurant, pleasing her often disapproving mother, and fretting over her occasionally serious boyfriend, Detective Adam Trudeau, must find out. God, I gotta start using a different word other than excited. Can y'all give me some other words in the comments because that's literally the only uh, <laughs> word that pops into my head when I'm talking about the books I'm excited to read. Murder comes to a boil. Yeah, I'm ready. I also got Olive by Emma Gannon. So once again, this was something that somebody <laughs> talked about on book, t book talk and I was like, Sounds good. I like it. Let's get it, Picasso. Okay. All of his many things, independent, driven, loyal, and a little bit adrift. She's okay with still figuring it all out, navigating her world without a compass, but life comes with expectations and big choices to be made. So when her best friend's lives branch away towards marriage and motherhood, leaving a path they've always followed together, she starts to question her choices because, to, like, according to Olive, life according to Olive looks a little bit different. So I'm pretty sure that this, as well as the next book I'm going to talk about, was on a book talk list of uh, books about being child free. This one's more fiction than nonfiction, but definitely interested. Um, yeah, I picked this up mainly because y'all know, I don't need to go into it a million times. I'm a child free person. So it would be nice to read more books where that may be the outcome. So yes. And like I said, another book was on that list, Motherhood by Sheila Hattie, uh, author of How Should a Person Be? <sighs> do, 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 do. do we have a little, do we have a little thing here? So some of the blurbs, this one's by Sally Rooney. The moral conundrum involved in the decision to create a new life can't be re resolved in the, play in the space of a novel, but motherhood gives a sustained and serious attention. Part of the point Hetty is making is that not having babies can be interesting too, that living eternity backward through one's ancestors could be just as fulfilling as living it forward through one's children. Um, in all the literature about motherhood, there remains very little about voluntary childlessness. Hetty's book seems likely to become a defining literary work on the subject, perhaps most of all because as a novel replete with ambiguity and contradiction, it refuses to define anything. It's hard to do justice to its complexity. This is less a book of, than a tapestry, a finely wrought work of delicate art. That was by Laura Fiegel of The Guardian. And then at its core, Hetty's struggle against motherhood is less about art than it is about authenticity. The challenge of being what one truly is, her conviction is that the soul's own problems, however ordinary they may seem, are worthy of the most radical kind of attention. That was by Adam Kirsch of The Atlantic. So, you know, slowly getting my collection of books about being child free together. This adds to the least. And last but not least, we finally made it to the end of all these damn books I bought. <laughs> Uh, I bought Black Fatigue, How Racism Erodes the Mind, Body, and Spirit by Mary Frances Winters. She's the best-selling author of Inclusive Conversations, and we can't talk about that at work, which both of those sound amazing. Uh, I think this is going to be my first book by Mary Frances Winters, so I'm very excited 
uh, what we need to know about black fatigue. Racism is killing black people, but it's not just the atrocities that break into the mainstream news cycle. It's also what award-winning diversity, equity, and inclusion expert Mary Frances Winters calls black fatigue. The crushing physical and emotional toll of dealing with a constant stream of racist acts and attitudes, from the clueless to the cruel to the criminal. Winters goes deeply into the root of black fatigue, describing the enduring negative impact of systemic racism on health, economic, workplace, and educational, and other social outcomes for black people. And she offers struggle strategies black people can use to protect themselves against black fatigue and discusses how non-black people can begin to actively dismantle the racist systems that cause it. So another nonfiction book I am very excited to read. Uh, I was already drawn to this based off the cover of course, the title, and then, you know, shoot me captures right there. This has been on my wish list on Amazon for a while, but I saw it at Barnes & Noble, and I was like, got to have it. So <laughs> this, this one I'm excited to read and would recommend. I haven't read it yet, but you heard the synopsis. Everybody should read a book like this. Come on. And there you have it. Those are all the books that I bought for myself in the month of February for my birthday, which again, I think I already mentioned this, it's today, but if I didn't, today's my birthday, February 23rd. I am 32. I am really excited. Um, I wanna say again, thank you so much for everybody who follows me. I know, especially in this month, I haven't filmed a lot. Like I said, I started off with a very high high at the beginning of February, and then it slowly kind of trickled down. My dog passed away uh, the week before last, but it's okay, she was 14 years old. She was, she was a good dog. She was a good, good dog. Her name was Gwenny. She was a Shih Tzu. Her brother died in 2020, like right as the pandemic was happening and he was 12. So she made it two more years after that. And now I have my third dog. His name is Biddy or well, Biddy is short for Balthazar. <laughs> He's a Frenchie. And basically the other reason why like I haven't really done much is this is his first time in his life not having other dogs. It makes me sad, obviously. I don't like to see him alone. You know, he used to be curled up with the other two. Now, he has no other dog to curl up and use as a pillow, which is like his go-to thing. So I wake up early in the morning to spend like my whole morning with Biddy. And then I go to work and of course he's alone and then I come home and then I spend the rest of the night with him. And we basically just, he just sleeps all day because he's 10 now. Um, so I had a bunch of senior dogs, <laughs> but that's okay. So yeah, it's been a crazy few weeks and that's all right. I'm gonna get back up on that high. I'm good. Some good things that have happened. I got a raise, so I'm making my mind about my books. And later today, uh, I'm gonna put a little like image. I'm doing a couple stream with my husband. We are streaming some party games and stuff. I'm very excited. And for people who subscribe to him, guess what? Three subs mean I get a book. So if you think that I should add to the pile of madness here, subscribe, subscribe to him. I'll put the details in there um, because I do want more books. I do, I can't deny it. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like, like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, talk to me in the comments. All things are welcome and thank you so much. Goodbye.